Okay, so to review real quick, the shell is the energy level around the center. The subshell, a subshell are the different shapes of racetracks within that one shell. And an orbital is the individual racetrack itself. And an orbital can only have two cars maximum per racetrack. It can be the sa same subshell because the racetrack can be in the same shape, but it's going to be a different racetrack, just in the same shape on the same shell. Okay, and every time you get to a bigger shell, it starts all over again. You have new, uh, you have more racetracks with more shapes on it. Okay, now this shell, the energy level, we're going to call this N, the letter N lowercase n. The subshell we're going to call lowercase l and I write that in cursive so you don't think it's a one by mistake. So we're going to call that a subshell is going to be called the shapes are going to be called lowercase l and the orbital we're going to call and this is don't get don't get afraid of this but the orbital we're going to call M with little L as a subscript. So M sub L, M subscript L. And that's going to be each individual racetrack is going to have its individual number M sub L. Now this shell, we're going to give these shells, name these shells by numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Up to seven, okay? So there's going to be seven, uh, po there's going to be seven energy levels. It's going to go up, here's the center. We're going to have n equals one, n equals two, n equals three, four, five, six, seven. So we're going to have up to n equals seven uh, shells around the center, around the nucleus. So that's going to be what n is. Now we have to name the shapes, the individual shapes within an energy level. So we could have, there are specific shapes that we can build the racetracks into. One would be a sphere, that's the simplest one. The next simplest one is a dumbbell, or I like to call it an infinity sign. I think it looks like an infinity sign. Like that. Or we could have uh, like a four leaf clover. So we could have something like this, a shape of a of a racetrack or we could have a flower which gets really complex but pretty much it's you see how this a sphere has one lobe to it this infinity sign has two lobes to it this clover has four lobes to it well we could do a flower with eight lobes to it one two three four five, six, seven, eight, you know, and it gets pretty complex. So we could have a flower like that. So now we're going to name these shapes. We're going to label these shapes so we can refer to them in shorthand real easily. So a sphere would be called, and then these are all L, so L equals, a sphere would be called S. And the, oh, and S is uh, equal to zero, and you'll see why in a minute. So this would be number zero or the letter S. 
or we could have P is the dumbbell shape, which is number one, or we could have a clover, which is D, or we can call that number two, or we could have a flower, which is called F, and that's gonna be number three. Pretty, but pretty much S, P, D, and F are the names of each of these individual, each of these shapes that are possible on one shell, in each shell. So up here I'm gonna write L could equal an S, a P, a D, or an F. So a sphere, a dumbbell, uh, a clover, or a flower. So I'm gonna write this again up here, just as a reminder. So N is the shell, or energy level. L is the shape. This is also called a subshell sometimes. And ML, M sub L, is the specific orbital. Okay, now on the periodic table, this is how this works. There's a pattern on the periodic table that makes this actually quite easy, so don't get intimidated, because once you get it, you'll be like, oh, is that it? So um, each of these rows are called periods. Now these rows, these are the same thing as N. That's all they are. So this whole N up here, this energy level, that's just the row on the periodic table. That's all that is. So we know if we're, say, if we're doing sodium right here, sodium is on the third row, so that's on the third energy level. So that means here's the nucleus, here's one energy level, here's two energy levels, and here's three energy levels. Sodium would be on the third energy level. Okay, if we take carbon over here on the right, carbon is on the second row, right? So carbon would be over here on the second energy level away from the nucleus. So that's all N is. And that's and that just corresponds to the rows in the periodic table. One through seven. Now the L's the L's are going to be the S those are these are the shapes, the different types of shapes. So S is sphere, P is a dumbbell or an infinity sign, D is a clover, and F is a flower. So those are the different shapes of race tracks on each energy level. And this is something you just gotta memorize, but it's really easy. So these two first rows right here, or these two first columns, excuse me, right here, this is S. These are all S. Now, all of these columns that stick up right here on this side, this end of the periodic table, the ones that are higher than the middle transitional, L, the transitional metals, these are all P's. These inner squares on the periodic table, these are called the transition metals or the inner elements. This is the D block and the, we just call them blocks. So S block, P block, D block. The block is the whole thing. So this is the D block. And then the extra two rows down here these are going to be the F's. Okay, so you just it's just a matter of remembering the S is the first two rows over here and they stick up higher than the D's. The P's stick up higher than the D's. They're on the other side of the periodic table. And then there's the D's is all the 
one sandwiched in between there, and then the F's are the two rows brought outside of the periodic table and they're just put down at the bottom. So that's it for the L's, S, P, D, and F. So if you look at these like an address, like if you want to give the address of a specific element so you know where it's at, you just write down the N number, the N value, and then you write down the L value, and that and that'll tell you where it's at. So for instance, H, hydrogen, the N value for H, that's the row number, is one. And then the L value for H is S, because H is in the S block. Hydrogen is in the S block over here, right? So you just put down 1s. Now if you want to write down what sodium is, sodium, where is sodium? Sodium is over here on the left. Sodium is in the third row, so that's the n value. So you write down 3. And sodium is also in the s block, so you write down s. Now what about, um, what about oxygen? Oxygen's over here on the right. So oxygen would be in the second row. That's the N value. And it would be in the P block, right? Now, if only it were that simple. There's a couple more details to do, but I just wanted to give you a general idea of how, to, how we're going to sit there and address, the, address these elements because really how we have to address these elements is that we have to give we have to say the whole thing we have to say all of the elements that came before it as well when we write it out now there's one rule that you have to remember before we get into this too much and that is helium over here you see helium is on the right hand side over here on the top Okay, helium actually, when we do this, helium belongs right here, right next to hydrogen in the S block. So we just have to remember that when we're labeling these elements like this with these shells and these shapes and these orbitals and stuff, that helium is over here. Helium would be in row one in block S, and it would be the second element in that row, in the in the S block. So we were going to put a little two superscript up there. So we know it's not we're not talking about hydrogen. We're talking about helium. So hydrogen is the very first one. So hydrogen would be in row one in the S block, and it's the very first element in that S block on that row. So we would put a little one superscript there. Helium is right next to it. Helium is also in row one in the S block, but it's the second element over so we would put a little two. But when we write helium out, here's the thing, and this is why this is why it looks confusing when you first look at it. But once I explain it, you should be fine. When we write out where helium's at, we don't just write 1s2 because of other stuff down the road that's too complicated to explain. So you just have to trust that if you go into further levels of chemistry you're going to be doing math equations and all sorts of stuff and it's actually going to matter but right now it doesn't seem like it matters but you need to get in the habit now of doing it so when we write down helium we don't just write down 1s2 we have to write down everything that came before it so we have to write down hydrogen first so hydrogen is 1s1 and then we write down 1s2. 
So this would be the configuration for helium. Now when we get into another one, when we start writing, um, let's say lithium, which is in a whole new row, here's lithium right here. So lithium is in, the N value for lithium is two, that's the row number. The block, the L value, is an S. It's the first element in that row in that block, so the little superscript would be one. But with lithium, you wouldn't just write down 2S1. With lithium, first you'd have to write down the last complete configuration, which would be 1S2 because on here with lithium, the last complete configuration would be helium, which is sitting right there. Because remember we imagined helium is over here. So helium is 1s2, right? It's one, row one, block s, second element. So helium would be 1s2, so you would have to write down the last configuration and then write down where lithium's address is. So you'd write down 1s2 and then you'd write down 2s1 because that's where lithium is. Lithium is in row two, block s, element one in that row. So what about beryllium right next to lithium? Beryllium, we would have to write down the last, the, all the last configurations of the last whole blocks. So we'd have to write down 1s2, and then we'd have to write down lithiums, the one in, in, its, in its own row, 2s1, and then we would write down 2s2, because see, here's 1s, Here's 1s2, 1s2, and then lithium is 2, 2s1, so 2s1, and then beryllium is 2s2. 2s2. So really, when you see these written down, it's just this last one right here that tells you where it's at. Now, it gets a little bit more uh, complex, but not to worry, I'll explain it, and it's not a big deal. Now we're gonna go over into, um, let's do boron right here. Boron is over here in the P block, okay? So let's look at all of the completed configurations that we've gone through to get to boron. We've gone through the 1s2, that's a completed little section, the hydrogen and helium, 1s2, and then we completed this little section underneath it, the lithium and beryllium, so that's 2s2, and then, now we're still in the second row, but we're in the P block, and boron is the first element in that P block on that row, so we'd go one. So, boron would be written 1s2, that's a completed section, and then 2s2, that's a completed section, and then to P1, that would be boron. So this last one, that's where it is, boron. And these are the completed sections that we completed before we moved on to the next section. And you have to write all this down in order. So let's try another one. Let's try oxygen. So oxygen Let's look at the periodic table. Okay, so oxygen is over here on the right in the P block. 
on the second row. So oxygen is on the second row in the P block and it's one, two, three, four elements over. So we're going to write a little four superscript there. So that's where oxygen is. But you have to write all of the completed sections that went on, that we went through before it to get to oxygen. So you have to write 1s2, that's this completed section over here, 1s2, and then we completed 2s2, that's the one underneath it right here, and then we went across, 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 stayed in the same row. Now we're in row two, P block, and one, two, three, four elements over, and that's the little superscript up there. So 1s2, 2s2, 2p4 is oxygen. So let's write that here. We got 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. That's oxygen. Now let's try another one. Let's try uh, phosphorus. Phosphorus is right here in the P block on the third row. Okay, so what have we, uh, what have we gone through so far as far as completed configurations? I'm going to highlight these out. So we've gone through the 1s2, we went through the 2s2, and then we went through the 2p1, 2p2, 2p3, 2p4, 2p5, 2p6, and then we were done with 2p. And then we went back over here to row 3 to start a new row. So 3, and this is the s block, so 3s1, 3s2, so we finished 3s2, and then we went all the way over on the same row, and there's still row 3, so 3p1, 3p2, 3p4, and that's phosphorus. So phosphorus is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, because it finished out that section, 3p, or 3s2, 3p, and what I say, 4, let's see, 3, 3p3. So phosphorus is at the 3p3 address, but when you write it, you have to write out this whole thing like this. You have to write all the previous configure, the complete sections that you completed. You don't have to write 1s1, 1s2, but you do have to write the last, uh, the last configuration in each section in a row, and then the 3p3. Now, there's actually um, a shorthand way of doing this. Once you get the hang of that, you can do it in shorthand. So let's say, for instance, we want to write phosphorus, okay? And normally, what did we write for phosphorus? P equals 1s2, because we finished this configuration right here, and then we did this configuration, that's 2s2, and then we did this configuration over here, so that's 2p6, and then we finished this configuration over here, so that's 3s2, and then we finally get to the section that p is in, which is 3p, and 1, 2, 3, it's 3 electrons over, so 3p3. So that's how you would write it out longhand. But 
if you notice, atoms gain and lose electrons and everything. They're always trying to get to eight electrons. They're always trying to get to the octet rule. So they're configured like a noble gas. They always, everybody wants to be like the nobles. The nobles are rich and wealthy and everybody wants to be them. So what we do is we compare phosphorus to its last noble gas configuration. So the, la the noble gas configuration before you get to P is in E, neon. And then you just have this row to do. You just have the third row to do. So pretty much the end, the one, the noble gas on the previous row, you just put in brackets and you say NE. And that means just look for after NE, then you write out three, you, then you write out the row. You just write out the row. So NE, 3s2, 3p3, and that's it. And that's how you can do shorthand with these instead of the 1s2 and the 2s2 and the 2p6. You can start on 2p6, neon, and you can just write out that row. So just say the previous, write down in brackets the previous noble gas the noble gas that came right before it, and then write out the row that you're on, just the row that you're on. So let's try another one. So, um, so F, fluorine, and F is right here. The last uh, noble gas that fluorine, the one that came before fluorine was helium. And so that takes care of row one. So you just have to write out row two. So two S two and then two P and how many, how many atoms or elements over is it in the P block? One, two, three, four, five. So two P five. So that would be fluorine. Now let's do Potassium, okay, here's potassium way over on the left, the K. So potassium's over here. So what was the noble gas that came right before potassium? That would be argon right here. So potassium, we would write down in brackets, R for argon, AR. And then we would write down See, this is row one, row two, row three, row four. So we would write down four, and it's in the S block, and it's the first element in that section. So argon 4S1 is shorthand for potassium.